Hey, how's it going guys? This is Ed from me and today we're behind the wheel of a 2008 Honda S2000. This is obviously the AP2 version. Huge thanks to Exclusive Auto Sales for hooking me up with this ride to review for you guys today. So let's get started, why don't we? Now, every single one of you watching this video, I pretty much guarantee that you guys know what the Honda S2000 is all about and what it's really capable of. The Honda S2000 is a definitely one of the most renowned lightweight two-door sport cars there are out there. And uh, it's definitely not a surprise that the S2000 is going to be a collector's car um, if it's not already considered one today. These cars were built from year 2000 till 2009. And uh, it's really unfortunate that Honda really stopped making these rear-wheel drive two-door sport cars. They really moved away from any of the rear-wheel drive platforms. This particular car here has 112,000 miles. It's a 2008 and whoever owned it before definitely put a lot of miles on it. But he or she really drove the car the way it was intended to be. A lot of times you'll find uh, 2008 models with maybe 30 grand on them. And you know that the owners of those particular cars probably just drove them on the weekends. Whoever owned this car definitely drove the car for what it is. The clutch in this car is super light, easy to drive. And uh, when people tell you that Honda makes the best manual transmissions, they're definitely not lying. The gear changes in this car are just second to none. It's definitely by far the best manual transmission that I've ever been able to get my hands on to drive. Easy to downshift. And sounds amazing doing it. This is obviously my personal opinion, but the yellow on this S2000 I think looks great. Obviously to some people this will kind of look like a taxi car, um, but I think it really stands out and really gives character to the S2000. The steering wheel is definitely nice too. It has a good 9 and 3 grip, whereas it has the 10 and 2 notches. The steering wheel right here is pretty thin, however you're not really putting your hands there anyway. The tachometer in this car is definitely an iconic one. The S2000 wasn't the first car to have an electronic tachometer, but it's definitely one of the cars most known for it. Now this AP2 version only goes up to 8,000 RPM versus the AP1 which goes up to 9,000. And uh, one of the things that people worry about with the S2000 is just the lack of torque in the lower end. So does this car have less torque than the Z4? It definitely does. Um, but it's definitely not something that uh, I miss. If you guys watched my video on why I picked the Z4 over the S2000, I talked about its daily drivability, the creature comforts, the low end torque that that motor provides, which this doesn't. After two and a half years of owning that car, I still feel like I missed the S2000. So that alone should definitely tell you something about how awesome this car really is. Now I've been searching around for an S2000 recently, I just came across this one. So Exclusive Auto Sales is giving me a chance to review this car for you guys. Definitely check them out, they're really nice people that I've been working with so far. And if things pan out right, I might actually be able to get my hands on this S2000. Now versus the C4, as you might expect, there's not a lot of creature comforts, the seats are manual, all this done to save weight. Obviously this uh, head unit right here is something that Honda S2000 owners don't really care about. They don't really buy this car in order to get a nice radio. In fact, I haven't even turned it on myself. So back to talking about the torque. I think I have a pretty good analogy that'll help you understand why driving an S2000, even though it's low end torque is low, is uh, not actually gonna be an issue. So this engine revs up to 8,000 RPM, right? The AP1 revs up to 9,000 RPM. The torque numbers in the AP2 have gone up. The horsepower numbers have stayed the same at 240 horse. However, if you were riding a motorcycle that has 13,000 RPM redline, are you really gonna be worried about it not having torque when you're down at say two or 3,000 RPM? 
that's kind of how I feel about this S2000. It doesn't have the low end torque. However, it's just so fun to rev high and to drive the car the way it's supposed to be driven that you don't really mind. And here, see, I'm keeping the RPM down in the twos and threes, and yet it's still enough to get around town. This is definitely something that the AP2 uh, does better than the AP1. On the AP1, you have to rev it out even more, but still, it's not really an issue the more you think about it. This is my foot flat to the ground in fourth gear. As you can see, this car is definitely not the fastest car on the road, but I can say that it's probably one of the most fun cars that you can drive. So cruising down the highway now at around 55 miles per hour, the engine's already turning 3,000 RPM. You'll still get great gas mileage in this car because this car only weighs around 2,800 pounds. With 240 horsepower, 2,800 pounds, it's already a better powder weight ratio than the Scion FRS, which isn't made anymore, or the Subaru BRZ. All right, let's see what this car is capable of. First gear, foot down. One of the amazing things about this car is that you can really rev it out, drive it the way that it's really intended to be driven, and at the end of the day, you're not gonna get into too much trouble. All right, first gear pull. Listen to that exhaust note, it's awesome. One of the things that people really worry about with this car is that it has a short wheelbase. And because it's rear wheel drive, because it's so lightweight, it, you can actually get into a lot of trouble with it. However, if you're just driving down the road like a normal person, enjoying the car for what it is, cruising down the road, there's definitely not much that can get better than this. Now, one of the things in this car that you might expect or you might not expect is just the amount of road noise that you get here. So traveling down the road at 70 miles per hour, definitely more comfortable in a Z4. Again, you're not really buying this car for creature comforts. I don't know how well the camera is gonna pick up on the road noise here, but it's definitely significant. And if you're talking about long cruises on the highway, it might actually annoy some of you. For those of you who are buying this car, however, for those back roads, for those casual cruises with the top down, you're obviously not gonna mind about this wind noise. Very easy to heel toe. So around this turn right here, the Honda S2000 has no trouble keeping its foot on the ground. Got a little bit of a tire trip there, but no problem at all. When you're considering this car, the things that you're worried about isn't necessarily being the fastest car on the road, but you definitely want to be one of the best handling cars on the road. And without a doubt, for the price that you can get an S2000 for nowadays, nothing else really is going to compare to the handling of this car.